Can you tell me when we're we'll give it a try. ready to go? Advance the slides with my thing or not? Try to click it. Here we go. So, um, as I said, we're trying to um, just provide an opportunity for the church to walk alongside young adults. And if there were young adults here, I would offer them the same token as some of you who are looking maybe to get involved to journey with them. Um, but we take, we base this um, out of Proverbs 27, 27, 17, is iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens another friend. And I think that's so, so very key in our walk to uh, live life together and sharpen another person. Um, Christ calls us to make disciples, and this is basically a, a unique way to make disciples, okay? So why does a church need um, an iron sharpened iron, iron ministry? Probably for a couple of reasons. I've listed them here to provide a support system uh, for young adults, uh, to provide an area where young adults feel free and safe to share what is going on in their life, um, to have a prayer partner, um, and also, we want to sharpen these adults, so we're like um, replicating who we are in Christ, so that they can grow in their walk, and then someday they can be a mentor to the younger kids, even in our church, or the young adults as they, as they get older. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. It's not rocket science. Um, what does a spiritual friend do? You're being a support support system for a young adult uh, through encouragement, through prayer, uh, through affirmation of their talents and abilities, um, giving guidance, uh, discipleship. Um, and we're going to look at through the training that we will have in the next month or two, um, a model that I've kind of put together just as a resource for you to use. Because I know a lot of you have already been mentoring students, so I'm not here to change that way of you doing it. I'm just wanting to give you some resources uh, in your hands to think about how to connect uh, to these young adults. And uh, I've built a model that I used um, at the university for years that addresses the needs, the physical, relational, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs of a person. Um, it's a DNA model, and it's a, a real easy, friendly, guided thing to use. A lot of questions, and I think I found as I mentored students, that was the real key, is to know how to do, ask good questions, but also to be vulnerable enough in my life to share. Yep, I struggled in the same thing that you're struggling with, or I, or I had to really seek guidance with this or that. Um, but really, it's open uh, to provide a safe place to open, to be open, honest, talk freely, um, and that will take time. That probably won't happen the first couple of times that you meet with a young adult. Um, but we hope as you build that relationship with them, they will become vulnerable. And I'll even address the young adults that we match you with, you know, that this is some of the expectations we have of you participating in this uh, ministry. Um, characteristics of a spiritual friend. Um, I don't think everyone needs all of these. That's not the point, but I'm hoping that you fall in line with at least one of these. Uh, I'm not looking for people who are perfect. I'm looking for people who are broken and understand God's grace and can journey alongside another person in this time, you know? Um, but I know in my life and in what, even what Velvet has modeled to me, the more that we were open, transparent with one another, um, the easier it was to really talk about the tough things that I was dealing with. Uh, for instance, um, it took me about four or five years to open up to her and share that I had issues with anxiety. And I had dealt with anxiety for like 18 years of my life. And she was like, Kendra, she goes, we've known each other all this time. It took you this long, you know, to open up. I was like, yeah, it just, it's really hard. Um, but I know like when I went into full-time ministry, 
and begin to open up with young adults, uh, college age students about anxiety, because it's now a big, big topic in our world. They were just like, wow, you really dealt with that? I would never have thought you would be the, you know, you are in leadership or you're a pastor and you dealt with this. I'm like, yeah, I did. And this is how I had to get help. And this is how I had to be vulnerable and transparent with my counselors, with my mentors and things like that. I think one of the biggest things, the characteristics that I will ask you is to be a prayer partner for these young adults. That has been such a huge, valuable component in my life uh, to have the opportunity and the privilege to pray daily for those that I was mentoring and ministering to. Um, so that's a, a big thing. Um, we can help you if you're a little hesitant about asking questions, um, what types of questions and things like that to get um, your young adult to open up. Um, but we'll do all that through a, a simple, probably an hour and a half training here in the next month or so, okay? <clears throat> What's the time commitment? Um, of, that will be, a, be basically between you and the young adult that we match you with. Um, but usually most meetings are like 45 minutes to an hour and a half, especially if you're like sharing a meal together or having coffee at a coffee shop or whatever. Um, we would like that to be like one or two times a month. But like I said, with your work schedules, their work schedules, that will be totally up to you. I'm not going to sit and hound you of like how often you're meeting, you know. Um, but the more you want to put into this and the more that they are receptive to meeting, you know, you guys will set your schedule with that. Um, I will ask, like, just once a, once a month, I'll send just a reminder, just with, like, two or three questions to just give me a summary. I don't need the dark details of your conversations. Maybe if Scott is meeting with one of our young adult guys, he's like, Kendra, we met on, you know, June 2nd at a coffee shop. We just talked about life. Um, he shared some prayer needs, this and that. Um, I will just use this just to track some attendance for, for the numbers we have to. I'm not a huge numbers person. I shouldn't be in the church, I guess. Um, but um, we'll track this just for, a, for our discipleship numbers and things like that. And it will also give me an opportunity to, be, to pray for you as spiritual friends and for your, the young adult that you're ministering to. So characteristics of the young adult, if we had young adults here who were going to participate, which I have um, a, a few that have texted me today and said, yeah, I won, but I couldn't make it today. Um, we ask that they be vulnerable and transparent, that they're seeking to grow and to learn. Um, they're willing to listen, be teachable, but also that they are also praying for you. This isn't uh, just a, a one-sided thing where you're always giving, giving. You have to receive as the as the spiritual friend and be open and say hey i appreciate if you, this week if you could just pray for me and my family or this particular need um i really believe this is how the church grows and offers support to one another through this ministry of just being accountable and praying for one another in that sense so there are some simple things and i can send this out we'll have you write your names and your emails some of you already have your emails there's just a simple online application for uh, to be a spiritual friend, um, and that's all linked. Jeremy helped uh, set this up for me through the uh, through the church uh, website, and um, so I'll send this link out if you're interested. And basically, it just gives us contact information, some of your hobbies, your occupation, just so I can kind of know um, some of those common interests, and I can kind of match you with with the young adult sense. We are um, looking to do um, young married couples. If you're interested in meeting with a couple, um, you can just let me know through the email that we send out, or if you're just wanting to meet one-on-one uh, -on -one with, with a person, you know, so we're flexible. Um, I'm kind of the old school person that um, I usually just match um, guys with guys and girls with girls. That's just a, a sneaky thing that I've always, you know, respected the boundaries of that. Um, but if there is a couple that wants to meet with one adult, I'm fine with that too. Okay. So you just let me know and we can work, 
work that out. Okay, here's my information. If you want to take a picture of this, write this down, uh, whatever. We also have a sign up sheet if you're interested. A sign up sheet does not mean you're committing today. It just, as I'm going to just probably send this PowerPoint to you, because it's just a lot of information for you to think about and to pray about and um, see where God leads. What questions do you have? In my mind, there's never a dumb question. What happens if the, um, the match doesn't work? What happens if the match doesn't work? Good question. Um, we can try to connect you with another person. Um, but I think you have to kind of give it time because it will take some time to really get to know. You know. I would say at least three or four months in that sense. But if there are concerns or something with the young adults, like, you know, they're no longer learning, don't take that personally. Young adults are can be all over the place, as we know. I'm not, that's not a bad thing, but I mean, especially with, we're living in a time of just uncertainty with the pandemic, they're in a time of transition too, just like all of us. But yeah, we'll be patient with it, um, but that's a really good question. And we could probably match you with another person, so. You know, if it happens twice, you're kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Vivi mentioned this at the beginning, but these are people from our church or that you know? No, people are, from the church. From our church. Yeah. People from the church. So if you're currently, because uh, currently mentoring somebody, mm -hmm. um, is this something that you get some additional information yeah. from? Yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. Because I know, like Pastor Mark, he emailed or texted me earlier last week and he goes, Hey, Kendra. And he goes, I'm uh, like, I'm planning to mentor these this other couple and these other two individuals and he goes do i need to be a part of this i was like you can but i mean like i trust you i'm not you know you don't don't feel like you need to be a part of this program yeah, yeah, i mean yeah. you're already doing stuff in the church i'm not here to no, it just be that. Good, though. at times uh -huh. there'd be nice to have some yeah maybe some uh, more of a structure uh -huh. as well so. yeah yeah but i know i think i know some of you on uh, somewhat of a surface level enough to know your walk with Christ, um, to know um, your heart and passion for young adults. But also, I'm not here to put you in a box to say you need to mentor this way. Because I don't, I don't need to sure. do that. You know, I just want to give you some resources that you can use um, in the training that we will have in the next coming months. We'll talk a little bit about boundaries. We'll talk a little bit because I don't know all the young adults here at the church. We will talk about, you know, the importance of confidentiality. That is so, so huge. Uh, when I ran the program at the university, I had to have a whole legal side and a paper that people signed. I mean, just because of the temperaments of everything that college students sometimes have read. Um, but we'll work a little bit off of that um, issue, uh, you know, if there is a life crisis going on if you don't feel comfortable and offering advice i can actually step in and help with that um, um, and also our pastoral staff can also offer some guidance with that uh, but you would have to be honest and open you know with uh, the young adult that you're meeting with you know if you you know if you're coming if they're coming to a meeting and they're like oh yeah i struggle with this this and this and like that's fine. We can we can help pray for you, help get your resources, but I'm not here to like fix, you know, your problems. I'm here to journey with you and be that support and get you headed in the right direction in that sense. Yeah. So I mean I missed it, but is there like a curriculum or is there like a, a pattern? Is it more what we think is best or how does how's it we'll work? talk about that through the training there okay. won't be per se i mean i'll give you a lot of different resources to use um as you're beginning to get to know your young adult and things like that and then it's just you know week to week or month to month conversations um and i can kind of help get the guidance you know what those could look like but, but like i said i trust people in the church um 
most people wouldn't even come to a Q&A if they weren't confident enough or, you know, or just were impressed on their heart by God and be like, yeah, I feel like I could do this, you know, so. The other thing is um, we will probably um, have to continue to follow like CDC stuff and we're hoping to, to do training maybe March or April with this um, in person, like I would meet with just on a, on a Saturday and we would provide lunch or, or whatever um, for about an hour and a half um, and then give you give your assignments of who we're connecting you to so it would be a couple weeks to connect with them. Um, you may have to just meet via technology one or two times until the weather warms up or you go to a you know, right now, like Starbucks, you can't even sit in a Starbucks to have, you know, coffee. You can go to the mayor um, and other small places, but I mean, it's just to meet outside. And that's what I usually did. Um, uh, if it was nice outside at my office at the university, we were walking the walk, and, you know, spending time in prayer, just out in nature. It's just so much easier that way. But for the times we have now, we may have to do... Uh, Facebook Messenger video chat, uh, FaceTime chat, whatever that looks like. And I, I hate that because that I feel like it's just it takes away the personal part of things. But this is kind of like the life that we now have in London for a little while. So, what other questions do you have? Including the kids who are at college that come back and forth, be like we, we can summer, or mm -hmm. you know, to be able to reach out to those. Yeah, so we I, can. I feel like we have a fairly large group. Of people. Yeah, so. like I don't. I mean, I need to like get a list from Jeremy and Edward and Pastor Mark, like who that you know, so we can like send out a message to them and say, hey, we're doing this. If you're interested, you know, you can participate. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm assuming we could probably temporarily use the church when the church is open uh -huh. to a meet here or yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. I mean, I can check. Um, I don't know, like, what the Wednesday evenings quite look like. I know children are meeting right now on Wednesdays. Are you meeting with youth on Wednesdays? No. No. Okay. Um, so that might be an option. You know, yeah. 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 There's some small groups that meet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That could be an option where we could set up times just to meet, you know, in some rooms, you know, here we can arrange that with Pastor Mark and his group. So, and that would be good too, because that would be a space and kind of place to meet. Okay. Other questions? I'm going to make an assumption that you might have more senior mature Christians volunteering than young adults, and we shouldn't be offended if we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm that can right be, away. That's, yeah, that could be true. That could be true. Right now, I have three young adults, and my only people that have reached out to me are to Jerry and Bethany, who are down in Korea. Awesome. Yeah. So let me hand you, um, there's a sign-up sheet up here. You guys want to just put your name, your email, and your phone number? And I can send this presentation to the email and the link, and we can get started there. And then here in the next month or two, um, we get that our next discipleship meeting is a week from Tuesday. We'll probably put it in the date on the calendar because prior to all of this, we were having our training like next week, or no, the week after it wasn't on Valentine's Day. So but the week after, but um, that was back in the fall before everything kind of went a little crazier with, with the pandemic. So, but no, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm here and I'm presenting again um, after the second service. So, but yeah, we're good. And I have your information in my spreadsheet, Jerry, so you're good. Oh, you're already Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I so cool to have this, you know, I, I was, a, was kind of wondering about the ratios in that. If it was going to be, you know, that's, that's a big step for a young person. Sure, like, yeah. You know, yeah. To that. yeah. So yeah. we don't have a multitude of young people. Yeah. Either. I know, like, 
Caleb and uh, Mickey uh, so have at least 10 to 12 uh, in their the small, small group. group. Yes. Yeah. So we were going to talk with them. Yeah. And Edward and Ashley had friends yeah. that maybe you don't see that come to their home church. Exactly. Their house church. So, yeah. So I think we oh, cool. might be able to even out. So.